that we had. We're, now we'd like to move on to staff presentations. From Swanee, we have Carlos Hurd, and from St. John's, we have Mike Register. Is that correct, guys? Broadcasting to. All right, we're green. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, and that, that is both chairman and members of the governing boards, thank you for this opportunity. We're, uh, like it's been said before, this has been a long, a long project in progress and a nice collaborative uh, process between both districts. And we, uh, I, I personally have been uh, honored to be a part of it and um, look forward to moving forward with our continued efforts. <clears throat> and I, I, am, I am suffering from a cold right now, so my voice is kind of iffy, so I do apologize for that. What we'd like to talk about today, um, I'm going to do first half of the presentation, and then Mike Register is going to take over for the second half. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Florida statutes relating to planning, um, the North Florida Regional Water Spot Partnership, and the Water Spot Plan and then the staff's recommendation. Now what I wanted to make, there, there's been looking at some of the comments and looking at, at uh, uh, listening to folks as, as they speak. We just wanted to make a few things clear that, and first of all, what the plan is and what it's not. The plan is not self-implementing. Uh, future growth projections are not automatically permittable. There's a separate regulatory process to evaluate each permit and its projected impact. I think that's an important point. These aren't just because we project that we're going to need a certain amount of water in the future. It doesn't mean that that's, that water is permittable. It still has to go through our regulatory process to get permitted. Um, for example, uh, we already have a constraint, which is an MFL, DEP's MFL, in the lower Santa Fe and Stony River, which currently does constrain permitting. Uh, at, in our districts and in the planning region. <clears throat> the plan does provide a roadmap to achieve those water supply needs in the future. Um, in fact, that roadmap includes a lot of projects. And I think we've heard talk about conservation, we've, heard, we've got other projects in there. Both districts are currently implementing, implementing a lot of these projects. We're not waiting on the, the approval plan to move forward with that. So we, I think both districts have realized that, that we need projects, we know we're going to need water supplies in the future, and we're moving forward with those to benefit the water resources. The other, the other point to make is this plan is not a regulatory tool. It, it doesn't require anyone to do anything. <clears throat> It's not, it, it incorporates recovery strategies, which do have regulatory portions in them, but it, it itself is not a regulatory tool. Districts have separate regulatory programs to permit reasonable beneficial uses while preventing harm to the water resources. Very important. Regional water spot planning is, is directed by statute. Uh, section 373-709, Florida Statutes, the governing board of each water management district shall conduct water spot planning for a water spot planning region where it determines that existing sources of water are not adequate to supply water for all existing and future reasonable beneficial uses and to sustain water resources and related natural systems for the planning period. That's in the statute. <coughs> which is uh, Rule 6240.531, which requires a 20-year planning horizon. It requires it to be conducted in a, an open public process, and then we had 36 meetings of a, a stakeholder advisory committee meeting that took four years. That's a pretty open and public process. Um, it, they'll be approved by the governing board and updated every five years. It's another important point. It's not do a plan and walk away from it and, and hope it gets implemented. We do the plan and we're required by the rules to update that plan every five years. So we're going to work on another update to that plan because those projections will change, those water supply needs will change as 
projects are implemented and developed, we, we need to update that information and we'll do that every five years. <coughs> And the process, again, the water supply, uh, water management district update the plan for five years. After the governing boards approve it, the districts have six months to notify public water supply systems of projects that are in the water supply plan. Those public water suppliers have 12 months to select those projects, if any, that go into their, their um, work plans and that are, that are then adopted into their comp plans, and those are updated every, every year. So that's really the only requirement of the plan, is that someone has to update their comp plan to include projects if they need projects to meet their needs in the future. <clears throat> the North Florida Regional Water Supply Partnership. This one I don't need any notes on. It's been, it's been, we've been here for a while. I think our first meeting, uh, first joint meeting was in Panic Springs. That was, uh, um, uh, didn't know that this is where we'd be in five years, but it was a, a, a great start to a process. Uh, back in 2010, we realized that groundwater doesn't see boundaries and we needed to have a, um, a talks with our neighbors. And, the partnership was developed with EP, St. John's, and Swanee. We also developed a the stakeholder advisory committee to, to give us non-binding recommendations for the plan. And in this case, the, the stakeholder advisory committee consisted of six individuals from each district uh, to uh, for, for different aspects of water supply and environmental. And, um, it was, I, I think it was a good process. And again, um, as I heard in some of the comments, it's always good to, uh, you can look back on your process and see what you can improve and you know, what you need to do for the future. So we look forward to that too. Outreach and collaboration. Again, we had 36 stakeholder advisory committee meetings that were open to the public. And we had the, the committee members were welcomed, uh, welcomed any comments from any other stakeholders to let them know uh, what their needs were uh, for the committee. We had over 50 meetings with other stakeholders. We, we met with uh, local governments, utility staff, civic groups, ag groups, environmental groups, the media, advo advo advocacy groups, that's a hard word, and other interested parties. We met with, and we, we scattered throughout both districts. So we, we did, uh, um, a very detailed public process to try to get everybody's comments and get everybody involved in the process. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Register, who's going to go over the, uh, the actual details of the plan. Clicker there. <laughs> <laughs> 